There are many great online resources for twin parents, but they can't replace the personal touch of local twin groups that provide support and face-to-face time. So what do you need to know about twin groups? How can they be a great support? Joining us today is Natalie Diaz. She's founder of Twiniversity and author of What to Do When You're Having Two, and she's here to talk about the importance of joining a local twin group. This is Twin Talks, episode number 14. The ultrasound shows your babies to be healthy. What? Did you say babies? You're huge. Are you having twins? Are they natural? Which one do you like better? Twins, huh? My neighbor's cousin's brother's uncle's a twin. So can they read each other's minds? How do you tell them apart? Twins? You got a two for one. Do twins run in your family? Double trouble. You're not having any more, are you? At least you're not Octomom. If you're pregnant with twins or you're an experienced twin parent, odds are you've heard it all before. Now it's time to hear from the experts. This is Twin Talks, Parenting Times 2. Welcome to Twin Talks, broadcasting from the Birth Education Center of San Diego. Twin Talks is your weekly online, on-the-go support group for expecting and new parents of twins. So I'm your host, Christine Stewart Fitzgerald. Have you heard about the Twin Talks Club? Our members get bonus content after each new show, plus special giveaways and discounts. Subscribe to our monthly Twin Talks newsletter and learn about the latest episodes available. And another way for you to stay connected is by downloading our free Twin Talks app, available on the Android and iTunes Marketplace. Before we get started, we're going to go around. We've got a room full of panelists today. And so let's take a moment and introduce who's here. So if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your twins. Michelle. Hello, I'm Michelle Rudden. I'm 34 years old and I work part time as a kindergarten teacher. And I'm also the mommy of Sunny and Matthew. They're my boy girl twins and they're 22 months old. Good morning. My name is Brenda Rule. I'm 49. I work full time as a corporate accountant. I have three boys. My oldest, Benjamin, is 13, and my identical twins, Joshua and Jonathan, are 11. Good morning. I'm Carolyn Bentley, and I'm 32 years old, and I am a stay at home mom and then a part time science editor. I have two children, Lauren and Kyla, fraternal girls who are just about to turn two. Shelly Steely, I'm the producer here at Twin Talks, and I also teach high school history. I have identical twin boys, Grayson and Sawyer, who are 19 months old. So another way you can join in our conversation is with our virtual panelist program. If you log into our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter, you can join the conversation live by using hashtag Twin Talks VP. Make sure you can be a part of the conversation at home. All right. And uh, I'm as your host, Christine Sir Fitzgerald, and I think I've got the the girls here. It seems like we're outnumbered with boys, but I've got uh, four-year-old uh, twin identical girls. And then I also have a singleton girl who is 15 months, and finally she's sleeping through the night. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Twin Talks, this is Sunny from San Diego, and I am mom to two beautiful little identical twin girls, Ainsley and Addison, and I have a twin oops to share with you guys that actually just happened today. Um, So I have four children total, and I was giving my older boys a bath, and the girls started to cry because they were hungry, and my husband wasn't home, so um, I put the girls on the floor in um, one of those twin breastfeeding pillows to kind of support them, and they like to kind of be close together, and it just kind of comforts them. So I put them on the floor and, uh, you know, in this breastfeeding pillow, and they were all happy being giddy and started to smile and kind of play around with each other. In the meantime, I go take care of my boys. So I'm bathing my boys, and all of a sudden, probably maybe five minutes later, <laughs> I hear one of my twins, this isn't funny, I know, kind of is, but anyways, um, just starts wailing, like crying. And I run in there, and my one twin has kind of her head just like positioned right on the other twin's shoulder. And it's like she's kissing her or something, but she, you know, she can breathe and everything. There wasn't an issue that way. And I go over and here my one twin was so hungry. She started to suck on the skin of the other twin. And so my one twin now has a hickey from my other twin. So, um, yeah, this is a pretty big twin. Oops. I guess next time I will learn to feed my twins before I bathe my other kids because they're only three and a half months old and my one daughter already has her first hickey. So that is my twin oops. Thanks so much. 
today's topic is joining a twin group, and we're talking with Natalie Diaz, founder of Twin Diversity and author of What to Do When You're Having Two. As a mother of twins herself, she's a twin expert, and she's passionate about helping new and expecting twin parents get the resources they need from the online community as well as local classes and groups. So thank you, Natalie, for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So maybe you just you know, give us a little bit of um, background and, and how you got started with Twin Diversity. Sure. Well, I am a local member here of the Manhattan Twins Club, and we are that's my local club where we meet in person. We're about 900 families right here on the island of Manhattan, so it's, it's one of the largest twin groups in the that's country. That's a big group. And I, it's, it's insane, actually, and you have to see one of our meetings. It's quite comical. We actually meet in Central Park. We, we, can't, uh, we can't meet in, like, an enclosed place. We don't sit. So I started going to twin clubs um, at my, my local twin club when I was about 14 weeks pregnant. You know, you get that initial, you know, there's two embryos, the deer in the headlights, you don't know what's <laughs> going on. So I just Googled, you know, twin support, and I found this local club that was already active for about 20 years. And I went, and I fell in love with those people, and I feel like they held all the answers that I needed when, you know, preparing for my twins and especially after they were born, they were they were vital. Honestly, mm-hmm. they they were crucial to my existence. Oh, These strangers yeah. who were then strangers, they you know, they did everything for me. So I really feel passionate about making sure that people do have, you know, support. Yes. And I started Twin Diversity because not everybody has a local twin group. And I felt that where do you go, you know, or what if you're a family, like a military family on the move and Mm -hmm. you don't stay put for too long? Everybody deserves to have support. So I founded Twin Diversity after being a member of my own local club for about seven years. And the rest of the city is history. Wow. And so, I mean, Twin Diversity, just to give us a you know, little uh, you know, snapshot for those who haven't visited um, you know, the website or learned about it. I mean, you know, what are the types of support and the resources that you're offering? Well, we have a lot of different venues that go along with Twin Diversity. It's certainly evolved. So we have the online forums, which are available 24 hours a day and are free of charge. We have quite a few thousand families that are active participants. So, because, you know, feeding two babies in Alaska is the same as two feeding babies, you know, feeding two babies in Thailand. So all the forums are there for you 24 hours a day. Then we have new resources available every single day online, which is something pertaining to uh, parenting your twins. We also have a magazine that is dedicated to families of multiple because you ladies, I am positive. I am not alone when I say it's wonderful to flip through the pages of a parent's magazine, but there's never anything about twins. Right. <laughs> and, you know, cute, maybe and a few I, cute I, pictures. I'm tired of feeling like the leper of the parenting community because that's how I felt on the playground. So we launched uh, Multiplicity Magazine two years ago. It's free for everybody. We also don't ever want people to have to choose Twin Diversity, Multiplicity, or food for your family. So our our resources are 100% free for everybody. Uh, Wow. Thank you. And we will be sure to post links on our website as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. And, you know, now with with the the online resources you created, and so um, tell us more about kind of the link. We know you started up local classes. So um, how what's the the added benefit for having local classes? Well, the the, the added benefit of having people locally is because, as I say, misery loves company. (laughs) And, you know, we, we need somebody to commiserate with. I need somebody that's sitting across from me at a table with either a cup of coffee or a martini that I could say, listen, here's what's happening in my life. You know, my kids are driving me crazy. I'm going to go into a murderous rage about my husband. <laughs> and, you know, if, if nice people with one baby get it, kind of, but they really don't. You know, we really need to, to kind of be in our own little cocoon of twin parents. And I find that the support that they could offer me or the support that you guys could offer each other is invaluable. And you need that. I need, you know, I need somebody to brush my arm when I'm crying. I need somebody to give me a hug. And I love Twin University, obviously. Hello. But you need that. You need that human contact and you need that support group mentality to be in a room. And when you say, you know, I can't get my kids potty trained and you need to hear the group behind you go, yes, Mm -hmm. you know, I understand. I feel your pain. (laughs) And you feel, you feel part of this greater underground society that twin parents are. Empathy is a big factor in the twin community. (laughs) I totally agree. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> How does one go about finding, you know, a local group? 
I mean, in, in Manhattan, you're clearly blessed <laughs> with a lot oh, of resources. I, am. I know, I know that. And I, I, don't, I don't take that for granted. And, you know, I want people to find their local clubs. One of the main problems that I'm having, because I do serve, I'm still the director of my local twin club. So despite the fact it's twin diversity, I have a total separate hat. And I run this twin group of 900 people. But I also serve on my state board. And there's the first thing that I would do is no matter what community you're planning on moving to, just like when you're looking at what good schools are in the area, I would certainly search to see if there's a twin club in the area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that's the reason that you move, but it, it could help a lot just to have a network already there when you move to a specific location. So mm -hmm. one of the first things I do is I would Google it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would Google the, the biggest city name in your area. So it would be like Cincinnati Mothers of Twins Club. And I also wouldn't always do the Twins Club. I would sometimes put Mothers of Multiple Club mm -hmm. or just Multiple Club. Multiples, so, yes. I think sometimes we, we forget that, uh, for, especially for higher order multiples, the clubs are often called, um, you know, I've seen moms, mm -hmm. moms of multiples, that sort of title. Um, you know, maybe I'm going to go around and ask our panelists here. Now, how did you connect with your local, um, you know, twin groups? Um, well, I actually started off when I first found out that I was pregnant with twins on an online support group. And we started on the Baby Center website. Mm -hmm. And we're actually still together to this day. But it was moms that are all across America and Canada. And a couple of them happen to be locally from here in San Diego. So um, those moms I was actually able to meet in person and um, get some face-to-face -face time with. And from there, um, we actually started our own play group and did a Facebook page and people added people. And so um, we got to know each other that way. And now we've got events going on, Mom's Night Out and all these fun things that we do together, play group. Oh, cool. Very cool. I think, and Carolyn, you're in the in the same uh, yeah, play so group. Yeah, I've um, since the twins were born, I've been part of the San Diego twins group that has the meetings once a month, different topics, and that's been a great way to meet people. And then also the um, perinatologist that I went to runs a multiples clinic, and they have a monthly support group as well. So the first other twin parents I met were through there. And then from, you know, meeting people at Target, going for a walk and meeting people, we've developed this play group that Michelle mentioned. We have play dates once a week, mom's night out. Tonight is actually the first dad's <laughs> night out. Night out. <laughs> um, so, um, and it, I mean, it has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. and because my twins are a little bit older, there wasn't the same presence on the web as there is today. There weren't quite as many resources that way, but I was very fortunate in that I had a coworker that when I went through my first pregnancy with my singleton, she had twins. And two years later, when I got pregnant with twins, first she laughed, and then she <laughs> said, you're coming to a twins club meeting with me tonight. And she was an officer in the San Diego group. And so I did. So I did start going while I was pregnant and never looked back. It was um, definitely a benefit. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I think it's definitely helpful if you've got friends that can kind of, you know, rope you in. But um, and if you're in a, a larger metropolitan area, I think that helps as well. And uh, and maybe, you know, Natalie, um, if, if uh, someone lives in a, a more rural environment, um, then, you know, do you have any suggestions for that as well? I definitely do. I think stalking people at Target is a, is a great way to, <laughs> to make friends. Yeah, I, I remember when, when my kids were three months old, I stalked this woman in Kmart over here. She had triplets. And I also, I firmly believe that every parent of twins should have a friend that's a parent of triplets. Okay, <laughs> that's called perspective, people. It just keeps crap in perspective for you. Everybody yes. Yes. in their arsenal of friends. So I stalked her, and um, we're still friends to this day. Um, my twins are nine, so we're a little bit on, on the bigger side. But, you know, if you live in an area, I would definitely speak to your obstetrician and see if anybody else is due with twins at the same time. High-risk doctors also hold the keys to um, twin clubs. And you know who else? IVF clinics. Oh, IVF yes. clinics also, they usually know what twin clubs are available because, you know, doctors are, are fantastic, obviously, but they can only take us so far with support. They like to be able to lead you in a direction of, you know, where to go and what kind of help you could use because then I'm not calling them every 10 minutes when I'm saying, you know, I can't figure out how to bottle feed my babies. <laughs> they want, you know, they need those those local support groups. And 
sometimes what has happened, actually, is a lot of times people will meet through Twiniversity, and in our Twiniversity forum, you could sort by member, and once you sort by member, you could sort by zip code. So you could find other twin parents in your area, set up play groups, and then often pediatricians will let you use their little room after hours, or sometimes even Jim Bree will donate their space kind of because it's advertising for them, and it gives you guys an opportunity to play inside in a nice, safe, clean environment. Oh, that's great. So, I mean, it sounds like you're saying it for those who may not have a formal group. I mean, that there's leaves the opportunity to maybe possibly form, create your own group. 100%. Yes. No, that's a great, that's a great point. And, you know, and I guess I'm going to throw out, out there as well. Um, I know there's a lot of different clubs that are part of um, an umbrella organization, uh, which is been known as the, the well it's now known as the multiples of america um formerly mm-hmm. known as the the national association of the mothers of twins clubs which is a long mouthful mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, I, so i think if, if you google multiples of america as well um they can you can search by by state and by yeah. uh, community as well maybe you can kind of tell us that what are the different types of groups out there i mean i think we there's there's a lot of different formats and um i know i mean i personally recently joined some just informal meetup groups um and i've seen there just seems like there's a whole bunch of different types of meetup groups out there as well that um and i'm guessing there's probably some that are twin focused um are there maybe you can tell us about maybe some of these informal groups sure well you know there's like you said there's so many it's unbelievable so you can check through your pediatrician you could definitely check through Meetup. Meetup sometimes are a little bit smaller, but it's all a snowball effect. So if you find one group and you bring two moms with you, you know, it's just going to gonna grow from there. Um, a lot of times there's also groups that are organized by like a YMCA. Sometimes they, they don't necessarily say, you know, a multiple meetup, but they might have a kid's meetup. And it's odds are, you know, one in every 30 deliveries is a multiple birth. So if there's 30 families, Let's hope there's 31 families. Maybe there'll be another family of twins. But that's <laughs> another place that's available. And you just have to find the, the little smaller niche groups. And also, you know what's interesting? If you have a local parenting magazine, if you write to the editor, often they'll let you write a little article advertising that you want to have, you know, a play group in this park at this time. Because there's a lot of communities around the country that have, you know, like a parenting pages or may have a page in their local magazine on a Sunday about parenting and everybody's excited about helping parents of twins get support and parents of twins still have that sideshow effect so as far as the editor is concerned <laughs> you know they want to be like oh well you know what we helped natalie organize this play group in central park so <laughs> it's interesting that you could do more than you think you can by just making a phone call or two. Oh, that's great that's really great to know well, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the, the benefits and of the, these local groups and what you can expect and, you know, why you really have to join a group. Okay, well, welcome back. Today, we're talking about joining a twin group with Natalie Diaz. And our discussion continues as we look at ways to get most out of your local twin groups. And you know, what are some of those things? How do those twin groups offer support? So Natalie, when we, when we look at some of these different types of groups, I mean, what are some of the, the big draws that can really help twin parents? The big draws usually are topics. Like a lot of twin groups would say, you know, on Tuesday, every, every last Tuesday of the month, we're going to talk about a new topic. And this month, we're talking about potty training. Um, I do know that you know, different twin clubs meet at different times. In Manhattan, we always meet after work, and we rarely do things with our kids. I know that sounds horrible, but, you know, <laughs> a lot of us are coming for, we're coming for support and for education, and it's very hard to listen to a speaker or to take notes when you have babies attached to each boot. <laughs> so, so often, um, you know, that's, that's definitely one thing, is that a lot of times for us, like this month, we have a speaker, uh, Joan Friedman, who lives out by you guys, who's coming to talk about twin psychology and making sure that your kids grow independently but still share this this wonderful bond of being twins. So the big draw of a local club is always having, you know, an open topic where you kind of get get to vent and, you know, get angry and get some answers and then having a very formal discussion about a topic that really hits home in your house right now. Mm-hmm, definitely. I, I think, too, I mean, I see a lot of the, cl- the clubs, the more formal groups that have education. I mean, I think twin parents saying, hey, I need help. Tell me how I'm going to 
get my twins to sleep through the night. Or <laughs> And how to do it with twins and not just a single child. You know, all the issues of being in the same room or feeding at the same time. It's nice to have a support group with the focus of having two babies at once instead of one. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of times twin groups wear two hats because you have the one side that we are support and education. And then you have the other side, which is just about socialization and fun in the play group. So you, depending on what you want to get out of your local group, you usually should be able to get out just what you need. So, and then, you know, as far as the education and, and support, what other types of support do twin groups um, offer um, in terms of, you know, t- helping new parents, especially like that first three months? Yeah. Well, a lot of times there's a welcoming committee. So sometimes when uh, new babies are born, you might have, you know, a family just bring you a hot dinner. How awesome would that be? Oh, uh, that's wonderful. Our group has a preemie support group. So if you have kids that are in the NICU, what you do is you call me immediately. It comes to my phone 24 hours a day. I don't think many twin clubs offer that kind of support. But we do because we're so big. So if you called me at 3 o'clock in the morning and said, you know, I just delivered my my preemies at NYU, by the morning I'd find another mother who was also in the NICU for an extended period of time who might know a nurse, know a doctor, you know, what day has the best lunch in the cafeteria. So... That's another benefit that we offer. Um, we have a, a same we have a same sex support group. So if you you know have your two dads or two moms and you just want to meet other two dads and two mom families, we could do that. We have a single family support group, a subgroup of our twin club because a lot of people just they're tired of waiting for Mr. Wright. So they're like, hey, you know, for five hundred <laughs> bucks, I'm going to buy Mr. Wright and I'm going to have some babies. <laughs> I never thought of you know dating within the twin group, but you know that puts a whole new perspective on things. <laughs> yeah, but, but we have it. Uh, we also have a special needs support group. So if you had you know babies that were born early or you know, a little bit later and you're going through the early intervention process. A lot of us have been there and done that, and there is no need for you to relearn those things. We already have the connections of the speech therapist and physical therapist and feeding specialist. So why not use those resources? And that, that's kind of where a twin club thrives. Mm-hmm. That is what you need us for. You need us for those. Hopefully you'll never need any of those services, but it's nice to know they exist if you did. Oh, absolutely. Now I'm going to turn it back to our panelists. And so um, maybe you guys can, you know, tell us what are some of the the things that you really appreciate most about the the club that you're in? As a working parent, I I have a little bit different perspective in that I really appreciated the structure of the once a month evening meetings that, as was described, you have the first hour or so is just the go around the room. What's everyone got going on right now? You know, little guidance from the rest of the members. And then the second hour was the guest panelist. And I, um, my position when I joined the board that my second year, I was the person who got to arrange all of those. So that was really fun, you know, helping pick the topics and working out the people. But uh, because I was never available during the day to go meet with the meetups, it was really difficult to connect with everyone without that evening uh, once a month. And and hearing about all the different types of services that are involved with the twins groups now, I love that it's evolved into that because I, I, I would have loved to have had some of that back in the day. The the preemie follow up, you know, the the um, developmental issues, all of that. Um, I love hearing that that's where it's gone now. Exactly. I was going to say, one benefit for me, I think the biggest thing are, yeah, the education topics and then just being able to sit down and chat with other people that are going through the same things. And that's how we found a lot of things that worked well, like, hey, this method worked well for you. Um, Why don't I try it? And just getting all of those ideas from people that are doing it and then being able to say, hey, I'm having a mean mommy day and someone to be like, yep, I had one yesterday and just to have that rapport with people is just priceless. And then, yeah, to be able to find, oh, your children were early, too. And just to have other people to discuss those sorts of things with is nice. Just the socialization in general. I think a lot of us, at least in our particular group, went from being full-time workers and had a completely different life. And then all of a sudden, we're the mom of two and maybe working part-time or not at all. And kind of just gives you something to do during the day and to be able to socialize with people that are going through the same thing as you. Oh, absolutely. Now, you know, I was just thinking, um, you know, if, if you had any specific needs, um, you know, for example, you're looking for support for, you know, breastfeeding twins or, you know, I think single parenting. So, uh, Natalie, I mean, w- you know, what's the best way to, to find out if you can get that type of support, you know, where you can get that support? 
Well, for breastfeeding in particular, I think that it, it's crucial. Um, the, the concept, I can remember when I was pregnant and just visioning having two babies on me. I, I couldn't I couldn't even fathom it. And of course they get here and my, my babies were born early, so they were preemies, so the doctors were like, you know, we really recommend that you breastfeed and they were kind of pushing me in that direction and I didn't know what to do. I was so glad that our local club has a breastfeeding support liaison. So I was able to call her and say, you know, hey Maria, uh, what do I do? What do I buy? Where do I start? How do I do this? And, you know, what I loved about that, that sometimes the people at the hospital, you know, they might be from a particular organization that might be on a soapbox a little bit more about breastfeeding. And I am I was already overwhelmed. And I feel like the doctors are pushing me and then this, this lactation consultant is pushing me. Having somebody that I felt was like on my side mm-hmm. that said, here, hey, Matt, you know, here's how we're going to do it. Here's how it's really done. You've got to get a twin breastfeeding pillow. You know, it was it was those simple things that she helped me with, and she really understood where I was coming from because she was still breastfeeding her twins. Mm-hmm. So anybody, any local twin club, and if you don't have that, that's where a twin diversity kind of comes into play because we could, I could usually find you know a twin specialist lactation consultant in any area around the globe, believe it or not. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, we just connected a legally blind single mother of twins with another legally blind single mother of twins. So if you want to talk about the needle in the haystack, sometimes the local club can't, they can't match people up that way. Or if you had a child who had a heart defect, or if you had a child who had, you know, a particular disability, that's kind of where Twin Diversity came to, to play a crucial role in the lives of parenting multiples. Because just because you can't get that support locally doesn't mean you shouldn't have that support. So mm-hmm. we're trying to fill that gap. But as far as locally, it was it was so wonderful to be able to call somebody and say, hey, listen, you know, I really need to breastfeed these things. How do I do this? I have milk shooting out all over in the shower. How do I, <laughs> you know, get that in check? So it was all those things that I don't think I would have spoken to with anybody. But knowing that there was another mother of twins who had been there and done that, I felt very comfortable discussing um, a very personal issue, but in, in particular breastfeeding with her. So I think that that's, that's an important part of a local group. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's, it's, it sounds like then, you know, you can you can get a lot of um, support from the local group and, you know, perhaps uh, you maybe that local group may not have um, a support in a very, very specific area. But then you can you know be be creative and look online or you know hook up with real people elsewhere. So um, so we can we don't want to limit ourselves. We just want to keep our no. possibilities open. Yeah, you know you got to get help wherever you need it. There is no right place to get it, and there is no wrong place to get it. As a parent of twins, you have to do what you have to do, and we are such a non-judgmental crew. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I mean, I find... Whatever it takes, parents, yeah. What, we're, we're like, whatever. Like, if the kids have a clean diaper on and we showered that week, that's like enough for us. That's good. That's all. I've checked everything off my to-do list. That's all yeah. what I need to do. But I love that. You know, I love being in a community where I feel normal. And I didn't find that before. You know, when I go to, like, play groups and when I went to music class and I'd be the only mother of twins in the group and one kid was hiding under a chair and the other one was grabbing a maraca out of somebody's hand. I was like, I was upset. I was embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, I can't get control of these kids. You know what? There are two kids and one parent, and I should have never felt that way. But when I started going to, you know, more play groups and more things that had more twin parents, I stopped feeling that guilt and that embarrassment and shame, and I started to enjoy being a parent. And I started to enjoy having two instead of saying, crap, you know, why was there this extra kid? What am I going to do with it? You know? So I, I love I love that, and I love feeling normal. I, that it, it was so important to me, and I, it took me too long to find that and get out of the house with both of them, and I wish that I would have just done that sooner. So anybody that's listening, don't wait. You know, if your babies are two weeks old and your doctor gave you clearance to leave the house, go today. Get out today and find another parent of twins that you could just commiserate with. It's oh, yes. <laughs> Now, you know, you raise a good point. Is 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 there a you know a good time to join? I mean, do you think there's there's benefit in joining you know early on in a pregnancy versus you know having the kids? Um, so you know, what's when should uh, we start that search to, to connect with other twin parents? I think by fourteen weeks pregnant, you should at least know 
that you have a local twins club. Whether you go or not is a different story. I say you got to go before these babies are here. The first year after the babies are born is a bore. You'll be lucky if you paid a bill in the first year. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But I would say try to go within, you know, the first 14 weeks and then definitely at around 24 weeks. After 30 weeks, your body's going to start to get a little bit more uncomfortable. So try to, um, to not wait till the end. You know, and they'll also help you with things like when you should go on your hospital tour and if your hospital even offers a local tour and, and if there is a breastfeeding class available. Those are things you want to know now. You don't want to know later. What good is it knowing later? You got you to gotta know sooner than later with twins. I personally feel like uh, once I met, you know, folks at the, the twin club that um, I just felt that connection and, you know, we, we bonded. So you know, made friends for life. We had a happy hour about two weeks ago. And again, since my twins are 11, you really go back 12 years and we still get together. With that group. <laughs> That's fantastic. I was going to say for the parents that are on bed rest, you may want to speak to the officers in your local twins club. If you have a smaller twin club with maybe 10 families, they may even be willing to meet at your house if you were willing just so that you could kind of break the monotony of bed rest. The other thing that we've done for some of our members is we FaceTime them into a meeting. You know, you could Skype somebody in or wow. FaceTime them in and leave them on an iPad just so they don't feel so alone. Because we all know, I mean, the 80% of families of multiples go on bed rest here in New York City. So it's, it's very common for us. Um, so you might want to, you know, recommend that to your officers for your local twin clubs if that's a possibility. Wow, what a what yeah. a great idea! I would love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, well, I think we, you know, that's going to wrap us up for today. We're running out of time here, so um, I just want to say thank you so much, Natalie, for joining us. And um, for more information about joining a twin group, or for more information about any of our experts or panelists, visit our episode page on our website. And this conversation continues for members of our Twin Talks Club. After the show, Miss Diaz will tell us about some of these clubs can help with the challenge of babies and kids outgrowing their clothes and gear. For more information about the Twin Talks Club, visit our website, twintalks.com. And we've got a question from one of our listeners in Florida, Leticia, and uh, she called in on our voicemail and she said that I've heard the twin moms have to get detailed ultrasounds every month. So why are these scans necessary and what are you looking for in these scans? Leticia, I'm, uh, my name is Sean Donishman. I'm, I'm a perinatologist at the San Diego Perinatal Center. Um, very good question. So uh, with, uh, with multiples, the, obviously the first uh, ultrasound you have is important to determine the number of placentas you have and obviously sacs. So when you have two placentas, the complication uh, with twins decreases. Um, after that, you have something called the nuchal translucency, which is offered everyone, which is looking behind the skin uh, and the soft tissue behind the baby's necks. That's also a screening test for cardiac defects and also uh, chromosome abnormalities, mainly Down syndromes and uh, um, other trisomies, such as trisomy 18. Um, the anatomy scan done between 18 to 20 weeks is important because you want to look at the babies from head to toe. Just make sure there are no structural abnormalities uh, with these pumpkins. Now, when you have two separate placentas um, in uh, fraternal twins, the risk of congenital malformation is the same as having a, a singleton baby. Uh, remember, two to three, or about three to four percent of uh, pregnancies are. Um, uh, complicated by having congenital abnormalities and heart being the first uh, and most common. About 34,000 babies are born annually with heart defects. Um, after that, uh, if they've missed any, uh, seeing any of the uh, anatomy, uh, they want to come, they want to have you come back in the next two to four weeks to uh, get those images that they want to look for and also look at your cervix because you're at risk for preterm delivery. And then after that, we look uh, just for interval growth. We want to make sure that these babies are growing well because if, for example, with twins, you have a higher likelihood of having abnormal placentation or abnormal uh, cord insertion into the placenta or the number of vessels are, uh, are um, for example, abnormal, such as instead of having three vessels in the cord, you have two vessels then uh, you want to make sure that these babies are growing well. Uh, but the anatomy scan is really um, around 18 to uh, 20 weeks, and then maybe one more follow-up scan after that to uh, obtain all the images that you may have not gotten because of baby's positions. Uh, the rest are really uh, to make sure that these babies are growing well. 
so that wraps up our show for today. We appreciate you listening to Twin Talks and join in on the discussion by posting your comments on the Twin Talks Facebook page or calling our voicemail at 619-866-4775. And don't forget to check out our sister shows, Preggy Pals for Expecting Parents, The Boob Group for Moms Who Breastfeed Their Babies, and Parent Savers, an online support group for new parents. And next week, we're going to find out how the nutritional needs for twin pregnancies are different than for singleton pregnancies. This is Twin Talks, Parenting Times 2. This has been a new mommy media production. The information and material contained in this episode are presented for educational purposes only. Statements and opinions expressed in this episode are not necessarily those of new mommy media and should not be considered facts. While such information and materials are believed to be accurate, it is not intended to replace or substitute for professional medical advice or care, and should not be used for diagnosing or treating health care problem or disease or prescribing any medication. If you have questions or concerns regarding your physical or mental health or the health of your baby, please seek assistance from a qualified health care provider. New Mommy Media is expanding our lineup of shows for new and expecting parents. If you have an idea for a new series, or if you're a business or organization interested in joining our network of shows through a co-branded podcast, visit newmommymedia.com. Hey, mamas. Don't forget to check out Mighty Moms. It's our online community built for new moms just like you. Not only can you connect with other moms, but you can also join us backstage for special mom-only online events. And you'll also be notified when we're recording so you can join us as a special guest. Visit our website, newmommymedia.com, and click on the Mighty Moms banner. It's free. That's newmommymedia.com. See you there.